he comes down from the country. From Drawn, is it apparently? Drawn, he comes down. Yeah. Comes down, he kicks. I don't think he kicks 12. But, well, maybe but, eight goals or Because you can't like exaggerate. That. You can't <laughs> exaggerate. A little bit of don't let the truth interfere with a good story, Robert. <laughs>
I'm going with James Hurd because you've got to try new things. Sure, let's do things legally this time and make sure it's all tickety-boo. <laughs> but I reckon they'll respond well to this guy. I reckon he's got that flair that they need there. I reckon they've had coaches that haven't had that. Clarkson, I think he's from the old school. It worked for a little while at Hawthorne. You need the softer approach now with these uh, young players coming through. James Hurd would be that. He's been through a lot, Jimmy. He's been through a lot. He he's been down low. He's copped it. He's learned a lot. All that life lesson, I reckon he would bring to this job. Yeah. And and maybe, just maybe. Well, I think the argument against that is that the Giants had a bit of hardness early in their career. Yeah. But lately, they're, not, they're actually capitulating and not mm. showing enough fight. And I reckon... Clarkson's going to put a bit of backbone into them. Mm. Trouble with a modern day player, Robbo, yeah. is you've got to be nice, you've got to cuddle them. <laughs> and I think they need a bit so of tough love. So you're saying up. you're not going to do the no, job? No, I'm not going to do the job. <laughs> but I think Clark, I give him a bit of tough love and teach him a new way about footy. And I think his pluses are we can play different ways. We don't have to play it a certain way. And he gets it by actual relationships as well. Mm. But mm. I think. Sometimes some players might need some tough luck. Well, I mean, he's got the proven track record, Clarkson. Uh, does he ruin his legacy, though? Because it's a tough gig up there. You know what it's like to go to another state and, and take a franchise and make it good. I reckon Clarko's just going to go, now. Nah, I've got this Hawthorne thing that was great. I'm going to just enjoy my retirement as this super coach. Well, it depends if he's got the itch to coach again. Mm -hmm. And if you have got the itch to coach again, don't worry about your win-loss record and what my legacy is going to be or what my... Uh, what my win-loss percentage. So yeah. you've got to, he's got to, excuse the expression, he's got to put his testicles on the line. He's <laughs> 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 plumb, so he's got to tell you what, mate. He will do that. My first training session when I got to Melbourne, we did a handball game. Went up to Queensland for a trip, uh, a pre-season camp, handball game. Very first thing I did. Ball goes up in the air, bang, I'm on the ground. I was half knocked out. I look up, there's Clarko standing over me going, welcome to the AFL, son. He King hit me. I did it. Belgium. So you reckon they need a little bit of that up at GW? Well, he's got a bit of that in him, Clark. He's got form when he was in uh, um, in London that time. Battle he of knocked Britain. Out, knocked out Ian Aitken from behind too. <laughs> I think the positive about him is uncompromising. And a good a thing about Hawthorne, having played there for so long, and the word that encapsulates Hawthorne, is they're ruthless, yeah. from John Kennedy, David Park and Alan Jeans. Yeah, but and that's... I think Clarkson has followed that on and I think they need to be ruthless. That's why it works at Hawthorne. They, yes, they had that culture already set up, but I don't think GWS has got that culture set up. They need to set something up first. Clarko will be too ruthless. You said it yourself. They need to cuddle these days, these players. You didn't, but players these days, they do. So James Hurd, he's a good cuddler apparently. I asked his wife. Really good, <laughs> good cuddler. cuddler. Really good. So I'm taking that argument. It's one, one all, all right? I'm, I'm okay, the, you can have that one. <laughs> thank you. I make the ultimate decision, so I'm giving oh, yeah, it you're me. the boss. I'm the boss. <laughs> one all. <laughs> Great era of football, the 80s. You know, you were in and around it in that era. It's actually going to be quite challenging to pick your best player from the 80s. Give it to me. My best player, and I may be biased because I coached him, was the um, number four who patrolled the goal square, St Kilda and the Swans. Great Tony Lockett. Oh, God. It's so hard to argue against that one, but I've got one for you. Who? I've got, well, yeah, I mean, he was solid. I, I give it to you. Solid? He, he was a big That's solid. That's size. A big solid <laughs> boy. It was easy for him. He's a massive mountain. No one could get around him. But I, I reckon you're a better player if you're a smaller forward. If right. you're a smaller you forward, because it's hard. <laughs> so smaller forward did amazing things out on the ground. The God, Gary Ablett Sr. Gary Ablett Sr. You, you can't argue with that. The it's a very close do. one with both them. And having played with Gary mm. at Hawthorne. Yes, and, yes uh, you did. As a kid. And then so you coach know how mercurial was. Yes. Didn't he kick 12 off a wing one day? When he, what call his first year, he comes down from the country, from Druin, is it, apparently? Druin, he comes, he comes, yeah. comes down, he kicks... I don't think he kicked 12. But, well, maybe you know, eight goals Because you can like exaggerate. That. You can <laughs> exaggerate. Don't mayo. let the truth interfere with a good story, Robert. <laughs> like, I haven't seen Gary Abbott, and he can do everything. He, to me, he's, it's going to be a contrary statement here. He's the most talented player I've seen. Gary Abbott, senior. Senior. Right. But Tony Lockett's a better footballer because he, week in, week out... And I know t people would say that he was a bit selfish, but Tony was more unselfish and a team player than Gary Ablett. Gary Ablett would be trying to kick goals over his head, a bit mm. like yourself, yeah. round the corner. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, like What's in, wrong with that? Bloke in a better spot. Don't, no, we burn <laughs> That's him. That's a new coach of me. Burn him. Get him off. Get him off. <laughs> if he doesn't chase his... Handball! <laughs> <laughs> and Tony's aggression, I know, I know Gary was aggressive, but he's all-round play. He's, and Daryl Bordock said once 
about Tony Lockett. That yeah. if he didn't have chronic asthma, he would have been the yeah, best. chronic se- asthma as well. He would have been the best centre half forward going around. Gary Ablett Senior was able to, with his size, I know he was as strong as an ox, yeah. apparently. I never played against him, but uh, strong as an ox. But he was able to move so quick, jump so high, kick goals from 60 metres out. It, it, there was no limit to what the man could do, and that's why I'm going with him. I'm yeah, he, um, and I think everything you say there is right. Mm. And, and he was a mercurial player, but Tony, great footy IQ, where yeah. Gary, I think, just did it totally on natural talent. Where yeah. Tony had natural talent, but he had a high footy IQ, his positioning, his ability to mark, his aggression. He's, he's lost a lot of weight now, Tony. Yeah, he has. You don't probably have to be scared of him much. anymore. That's probably lost him. You're worried about I remember belly. one day <laughs> I sent the runner out with my, with my <laughs> mate. And I said, Brendan, you go and tell the big the big bloke in the goal square, if he doesn't chase, I'm going to take him off. I use a few expletives there, Robert. I can imagine. So Brendan goes, and I said, Brendan, I'm going to watch you. <laughs> so I watched him, and after the game, I said, what did you say to him? He said, I walked up to him, tapped him on the bum and said, well done. Good keep, it going. <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. There's another great story, Spud Frawley, the late, great Spud Frawley said, they were trying to recruit him. Lots of teams were trying to grab him, but St Kilda really wanted. They went up to the, uh, the, the local footy over, I guess it was up, up in Ballarat somewhere, yeah. and they said to him, mate, we want you to come to St Kilda, we want you to be our full back. And he said, nah, well look, I'm just leaving my options open, I've got other clubs, more money, whatever. And they said, well, if you don't play for us, you're going to have to play full back on this bloke. And they waved at a car and Tony Lockett got out of the car because they just picked him up as well and he said, where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play against that bloke. I want to play with him. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very aggressive man, the big time. Oh, so. a, but, yeah. uh, but for me, if I was picking a team at full forward, I'd pick Tony Lockett. He's the Don Bradman of our game, as Spud, Spud Frawley once famously said. He's kicked the most goals. Yep. Absolute superstar. I'm going to give you that one. Hard to argue against. Probably just uh, by a breath. Just by, by a breath. breath. They were two mercurial players, very mate. Close. 2 1, you're the winner, Rocket. I know, Robert. Great you're, to be here. You're a legend. Thanks, Thanks mate. mate.